Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you this fun idea for making watercolor Polaroids and you can use images or landscapes from your mind that are your favorite and that you want to remember just like a real Polaroid. I'm using 140 pound watercolor paper and I cut out three pieces that are four and a half inches long and three and a half inches wide. To get that Polaroid look, I am masking off the edges of my paper and I'm masking off more space on the bottom because there is more space on the bottom of a Polaroid. It gives it that classic Polaroid look and then less space is being masked off on the edges. So the theme for my Polaroids today are three of my favorite Arizona landscapes. So for this one, I'm starting with a light blue, dropping in some dark blue, but I'm just using very quick motions across my paper to give it that really nice streaky organic feel. So now I'm coming in with a brighter green for this grassy land part of this little landscape. The area I'm inspired by is up past Strawberry in northern Arizona where my family's cabin used to be and it really is just this bright green yellowy grass with dark mid-tone green shrubbery. It's Beautiful. The sky is so blue, there's hardly any mountains. And so that's what I'm taking inspiration from. So with these mid-tone greens, I'm making sure that my grassy area is still wet so that everything is blending together. I'm adding just a tiny bit of areas of green into the main part of the grass so it adds some contrast, but I really want to keep the main section light. Here I've cleaned my brush and kind of dried it off and I'm just taking some of the paint away to again create more of a highlight there and then I'm going back in and adding a contrasting darker green to a few areas. And the best part with these Polaroid paintings is always going to be the paint peel. And look how cute it turned out! And if you want to add a date or a little bit about a memory that reminds you of that place down in the bottom white section of the painting, I think that would be super cute. So for this next painting, I am inspired by more of the desert, uh, Sedona type feeling of Arizona. And we have amazing sunsets in Arizona. So for this sky, I'm doing pretty much the same technique as the first one, but I am dropping in yellows and oranges and some pink. And then I'm going in with the deep red for the mountains. My biggest tip for when you're painting these loose, almost abstract landscapes is to just maintain the white space. So you can see that I've used the base of my brush for the beginning of these mountain areas, but then I come to the tip of my brush and maintain the white space between them. That really gives the illusion of highlight and separation between each little mountainous area. And then before these mountains have totally dried, I'm going in and adding some green. This is representing shrubbery, all the cacti, and all of the vegetation we have in the desert. It's actually a really colorful place. So I'm dropping in yellows, some reds, greens, and really letting it all blend together. One of the beauties of Polaroids is they're not always quite sharp and in focus. And so I'm just letting everything be loose and flowy because it feels true to a Polaroid to me as well. One of my favorite things I've done as a parent has been to take my kids out to the desert for bonfires or for camping and it's just one of my favorite memories. So here's the tape pole and I just love how cute this turned out and look how cute they look together. We are starting on our last one now. So this next painting is inspired by the beautiful mountains and forests we have here in Arizona. And I'm doing more of a moody painting this time, so I'm doing a light wash of purple, adding in some pinks, and also some dark purpley blues for the sky. Again, doing that same sweeping motion so that everything is blending together and has the same kind of direction. And then before everything is dry, again, I'm going in with these dark purples and blues to create these mountains. I really want to layer them over each other so that you can feel like you're looking at a landscape that has just got mountains rolling in the distance. Again, making sure to maintain that white space so you can see the difference between them. And then I started with purple in the back, 
went to blue and then they're getting more green as I go forward. And before I paint the mountain in the front, I wanted to maintain some of the white space around these pine trees I'm going to be painting. So I'm painting the trunks first and then I'm going in with a dark kind of gray green to paint that mountain in the front, again, leaving the white space. I waited for it to dry just a little bit so that I could go in and add more details to the trees without it totally blending in. I love that it still blends and bleeds because again it gives us that really soft, uh, not clear Polaroid effect. And I'm just really framing the Polaroid with these trees. So the ones on the right and left edge are taller like as if they're closer to us and then smaller as they get to the center of the painting and I'm going to pull the tape and reveal the third one. I just think these turned out so cute. You could do so many different things with this idea, places you've visited, places around your hometown that you love, people, things, anything you'd like to have a Polaroid of that you don't, and you can make a watercolor one. Thanks so much for watching, bye.